Thank you, last can, Carla. First of all, can I thank people before Prophet for introducing this motion and whoever can claim the credit. And I know a lot of different people have been lobbying on this, but I'm very pleased to see that the Green Paper on Disability Reform has been pulled, as it were. Now, the Minister has said it was just a consultation paper, and while I accept her bona fides, I hope that lessons will be learned from what has happened in the meantime, with the substantive issues and concerns that were raised being dealt with. A hugely important part of this will be full consultation uh, with people who have a disability and also to ensure that the ableist and discriminatory obstacles that were put in place are removed from any future Green Paper. The Green Paper had its at its core a proposal to categorise disabled people for the purposes of allocating social welfare payments, because this enshrined in the paper the possibility, indeed the probability, of discrimination between different people who have a disability. So you'd have them competing with one another for resources, and that is simply not acceptable. I think it was dangerous, it was morally degrading, because the objective seemed to be to reduce costs rather than supporting disabled people to work. And Minister, given that we have the lowest rate of employment for disabled people, and given the additional cost of living with disability, that green paper would have been a disaster. Now, this motion is aptly entitled Disability Justice, and I support its asks. Maybe some nuances around the means testing for certain payments, but I fully support no means testing for carers allowance, um, whether you call it carers allowance or a guaranteed living wage. You don't get carers allowance unless you care full time for a person who needs full-time care. Therefore, your payment cannot be dependent on the household income. It completely undervalues the work of carers, and indeed, it's discriminatory, very often against women, and that has to change. In regard to the introduction of payments to cover the cost of disability, I fully support this. The Department of Social Protection published a paper, The Cost of Disability, which, when we account for recent inflation, would come in at between about 10,000 to 14,000 per year extra simply to cover the cost of disability. And it's absolutely urgent that the next budget would introduce a cost of living or equity payment to help cover this extra costs. We also need to uh, be aware that the employment and wage subsidy scheme for disabled people is the lowest in Europe. It's medicalised. It asks a disabled person to sign a piece of paper to say they are 20% less productive than their non-disabled colleagues. This scheme is flawed and it sends the wrong message. Instead, Minister, we should be trying to support disabled people into employment and in all cases, supports should follow the person. Finally, in regard to personal assistance, there is no legal right to personal assistance in this state and the government needs to prioritise investment in personal assistance. And again, the next budget should invest in personal assistance rather than residential care or services that continually segregate people with disabilities. Thank you.